There are a lot of questions we get about the monitor selection when it comes to post-processing. So people ask me, what is the monitor that I should be using when it comes to processing images uh, using software like Lightroom? By the way, can I please request you to subscribe to this channel so that you get all the updates that we send. Uh, also, it's a good idea to hit the bell icon so that you get instant notifications when we have new content. Well, I, I told you I'm a Mac user, I use a MacBook Pro, and right now I'm actually using an external monitor which is connected to my MacBook Pro, which is below here. It's basically a monitor called a BenQ Adobe RGB compatible monitor, which is 32 inches wide, which allows me to look at colors from a print perspective where I can actually be seeing the colors on my monitor, which will actually end up on the print. So it's very important to understand four or five different things when it comes to choosing a monitor. The first and foremost is the size. It depends on how far you sit from your monitor. Are you sitting on your uh, on, on your flight and looking at images, then a MacBook Pro or a laptop is good enough? Or are you sitting at a distance of three, four feet from your monitor? It's important to then know what's the size you want. I prefer to look at my images in large sizes, so I prefer to have at least a 27 inch monitor, but here is a 32 inch BenQ monitor that I'm using. Now, apart from that, what's more important is also the resolution, a resolution with respect to the pixels, per inch on the monitor, which helps you look at images in detail. You can actually be appreciating sharp images if you have a lot more pixels, for example, on the MacBook Pro's Retina display. So on this monitor, I can actually be looking at 4,000 pixels. It's actually called a 4K monitor, which means 4,000 pixels wide, which helps me look at images and appreciate them and see how sharp they are or how sharp they should be or they are not. So that's one important thing apart from size of the uh, real estate size of the monitor, also the resolution. I also would recommend you buy a monitor which is not glossy. It shouldn't be reflecting other lights in your room or some window light that is appearing in a corner and it's reflecting that light because when you are processing, your monitor should actually be probably of a matte finish which doesn't reflect light which is coming in from all other angles. I would actually recommend you using a monitor which only reflects light which is coming from within. By the way, a monitor like this also comes with something called as a hood, which protects your monitor from external lights, which is actually, it is like a lens hood that you put to a lens to protect your lens from getting unwanted light into your frame. Likewise, a monitor like this also comes with its own hood. Most importantly, the Adobe RGB color, uh, uh, you know, representation is what's, what's more important because if you've been processing using a laptop, the laptops can only be uh, able to show you the sRGB color gamut, which is usually used for posting pictures on the web because most browsers understand sRGB. But when it comes to fine art quality printing, you should be able to produce images in the best colors because your monitor should be able to tell you what colors would actually end up in your print. So this kind of a monitor, which is an Adobe RGB uh, quality monitor can allow you to see colors which ends up coming on the print later on. And what's more important uh, for a photographer like me who loves to shoot vertical photographs is also to be able to appreciate my my photographs in a vertical monitor and that's what happens with a professional monitor like this let's see what happens now if i want to shoot a photograph in a vertical orientation and post process it why should i be looking at it from a horizontal perspective so let's go ahead and change my monitor to a vertical orientation now now this is a vertical orientation and when i'm processing my images i would love to look at my monitor like this especially if my photograph is shot in a portrait orientation and not a landscape orientation so these are the few things you you, you can keep in mind when you're choosing a monitor you can actually go for a smaller size if you don't have that much space and budget it's also important for you to look at different things like the matte finish it's also important to look at resolution apart from size and also if you can get a monitor that can show you adobe rgb colors then you have the best monitor in the world. By the way, if you're excited about post-processing and you want to learn Lightroom, you should be signing up uh, for the Lightroom course that we have. The link for this course is right below in this description. You can actually sign up for this course where we delve deeper into library as well as develop module of Lightroom. And we understand all these things from a color management perspective, from Adobe RGB, sRGB, how do we import images and get into the depths of how you can post-process your images.